Well, here we have an all-pass filter interested in getting the impulse response for this filter. So apply a delta function for the input x and also assume that the delay line has been filled with zero values. The output in this case then would be the impulse response h of n. Now if we applied a 1 on the first time step, then the delay line output is 0 throughout, and so that 1 eventually pops out as our very first value. So we have a value of minus g. On the second time step, we replace that by 0, So that has some consequences immediately for the output. The 1 has been injected into the delay line, but it's going to take a long time until it pops out the other side. Eventually, when it does so, which occurs n sample times later, the 1 appears, we scale it by g, we see it appearing over there as well, that is, we see the 1 appearing. g passes through the minus g multiplier, and altogether we have 1 minus g squared. And provided that g is a value less than 1, that value will be positive. Now once you get the idea, you see that the process is pretty much the same, except now we inject a value of minus g into the front end of the delay line. Now another n sample times go by, so now we are at 2n in terms of our time step, and we have a value of g times 1 minus g squared. You keep doing that process, and we find that the 1 minus g squared factor shows up, but then we have a progression basically going from g to g squared, g cubed, and so on. So we had this large negative going impulse at the beginning, and then a series of positive decaying impulses after that. Now, we usually like to think of the loop time, which is specified in seconds, as being one of our critical parameters for uh, when we, earlier we were looking at the comb filter. And the same holds true for the all-pass filter. The loop time would be the product of the number of delay, sam delay line samples times the time step which is also the value of n divided by sampling frequency. So I'm going to swap out my time axis for time values now, and so each of these impulses occurs at an integer multiple of tau. Now the reverb time is an indicator of how long it takes for these impulses to die out by a factor of minus 60 dB, 60 decibels, and we take that as silence. And it turns out that the reverb time is approximately proportional to 0 0.001 raised to the factor of tau divided by the reverb time. So it has roughly the same value as a comb filter.